Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good evening to FASA Coalition participants and YouTube live viewers. Alhamdulillah, grateful to God Almighty that with his blessing, we are able to gather virtually tonight. I'm Nur Shamimi, your host for today. Welcome to the final round of FASA Coalition 2020 and 2021. To those who don't know, this is the first time that Faculty of Science Student Association, FASA, has an online quiz competition, which is FASA Coliseum. FASA Coliseum is an open to all undergraduates from Faculty of Science, and the platform used is quizzes. So the quiz questions incorporate topics from biology, chemistry, physics, and mathematics. For tonight, we have 20 groups that consist of 20, that consists of 80 brilliant participants. So don't forget to support your favorite team in our comment section. So I am sure that every team is so eager to snatch the top three spot to win our grand prize. So do you know what is our grand prize? So our grand prize is worth of 100 ringgit. That's a lot of money. So I am sure that I can assure you that tonight is going to be an intense competition. So please look for it. So dear participants, please check our Discord group for the link to access the quizzes. And to our YouTube viewers, if you have any question about the quiz, feel free to put them in the chat box and we will have a Q&A segment at the end of the session. This event it would not have existed without our main pillar. So I would like to invite the director of FASA Coliseum 2020 and 2021, Sheikh Alif Imran, to give a speech. Welcome. Thank you, Shamimi. Okay, I'm very nervous right now. <laughs> okay, uh, everyone. Hi, everyone. Okay, my name is Alif Imran. I'm the director of FASA Collegium. Assalamualaikum and good evening, everyone. I would like to take this opportunity to say on behalf of the Faculty of Science, FASA and FASA Collegium Committee, thank you to all participants and YouTube live viewers who have supported FASA Collegium until this moment. For your information, this program is inspired from the word Colosseum. As we all know, Colosseum is a famous building in Rome Empire. Inside the Colosseum, the fighter will compete with each other to become the best while the spectator cheering for them. So, in this situation, all participants from different departments, which is from biology, chemistry, physics, and mathematics, come together and work as a team to achieve their goal. At the same time, you, We'll support them as YouTube live viewers. Even though tonight is the last session of FASA Coliseum 2021, don't worry, after this, we have another program such as Putra Science YouTubers, Future Career, Future Career Talk, and many more to come. So please subscribe to FASA Studio channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload new videos. At the end of my speech, I would like to say good luck and all the best to all team that will compete tonight. That's all from me. Thank you. Back to you, Shamimi. Thank you so much, Imran, for the meaningful speech. Now, I will introduce the panelists that will be joining us tonight. So first, let's welcome uh, Najiha from the Department of Biology. Hi, I'm Najiha. Hi, Najiha. Hi, back to you. Oh my, you look lovely tonight. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's welcome Aisha from Department of Chemistry. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Shamimi. Hi, Najiha. Hi, Aisha. Hi. Are you excited for tonight? Yes, I'm excited for tonight, but at the same time, I'm also nervous to explain the question. 
It's okay. I'm sure that you will do great. So let's sure. welcome Shaza from the Department of Music. Hi, Mimi. Hi, Shaza, Mimi. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you loud and Hi, clear. Hi, Shaza. Welcome. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, can you hear, can you hear me right now? Yes. Yes, I can okay. hear you clearly. Okay. Hi, I'm Welcome, Shaza, Shaza from Department of Physics. Okay, and lastly, uh, Sarah from Department of Mathematics. Welcome, Sarah. Hi. Hi, Shamimi and all the panelists from the other department. Okay, hi, Sarah. So everyone is looking so pretty tonight and I hope we will uh, work together for the best, right? So, um, and for your guys' information. So after each question is answered by the participants, our panelists, will be uh, explain uh, more about the question. So while we wait for all participants to enter the quizzes, let's see the leaderboard based on the semi-final score last week, shall we? Oh wow, that's I can see that the top team team of silence with the score of fifteen thousand four hundred and fifty, and the second place is Quadrifoglio with fifteen thousand one hundred and thirty, and the third one is the Mampu Bole with the score of fourteen thousand nine hundred and sixty. That's a lot of score. So. Uh, even though these three teams uh, dominate the uh, the scoreboard, but don't worry, uh, the other groups, you can try your best because this is the final round. So you can try and answer the question that we prepared correctly, and inshallah, you will be able to compete with these three teams. So, um, Najiha, do you think that uh, the question that we prepare is um? is interesting enough for the audience? I think the question is going to be challenging and intense for the participants and also for the audience. Oh, wow. I'm excited to know about the questions. I hope that uh, the viewers also um, can try to answer the question and I will try my best to read your comment in the chat box. So um, so let's see some of the comment. Oh, oh, Nur Azwan say, "Man, adoi, mana laki ni? Oh, you should join our uh, the Fasa Coliseum. It's okay, even though there's no guy here, you can participate in our comment section. And please don't be shy and put down your comment. Okay." Okay, nice. So I'm pretty sure that all the participants are ready to start the quiz. So without further ado, uh, let's start the countdown, shall we? So can you please count down from, with me? Okay, from five, four, three, three two, two, one. one. 
Let's go. Go. So, Okay, let's start the quiz. Ciao, everyone. Okay, let's hope everything is doing well. So inside, there's two participants. So let's see the comment. So Kuratu Ain, she said, kill it. Okay, all the participants, please kill this question. So there are some other people say good luck to all the participants. Okay, we have, we are having Technical error, so don't worry. The our dear YouTube live viewers, you can still comment, and I will try my best to to read your comment. And don't worry so much. Okay. Um. Okay, Shaza. You are from. You you are from uh department of. So do you have any experience regarding learning the physics subject? Um yes. Um actually I have an interesting story behind the behind why I take why I take why I pursue my studies in physics. Um actually I hate physics during my high school because I think it is very difficult and uh, I always uh, have been called uh, have been school with my uh, teachers because um i can't remember any definition about what is force i can't remember any uh, of the definition but during my foundation uh, i think physics is easier because um in foundation we learn more we learn uh, more details in physics so uh, it, it is more more it is easier to understand about the concept in physics and I think like actually physics in high school is uh, difficult because it just uh, teach about the surface, surface of physics because physics mm. has different, um, different cabang. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. That's true. Thank you for sharing, Shaza. Because uh, I also do have an experience regarding physics because I remember during SPM, I cried because I can't solve a physics question. It's kind of embarrassing. Even though I'm not taking physics now, I'm taking chemistry, but it's still fun. It's still fun learning physics, even though, yeah, I know it's difficult. So what about Najiha? Do you have any experience regarding biology? So um, biology, biology, I uh, yes, uh, I started to love biology since I was secondary school. I really love biology when I was swimming at first doing form four classes. Um, but actually, I doesn't do well in my SPM. I got B for biology, so I was like, I so frustrated. I want to do very well, so I push myself to work harder and get a lot better in matriculation and even now. So Alhamdulillah, Allah just made everything went well and I really can achieve my dream now, but I hope my dreams can get bigger with biology. So yeah, it's great. Yeah, that's true because we don't know what past happened and the future, right? So um, for the our YouTube live viewer, you also can share your experience regarding your courses. So um, what about um, Sarah? Do you have any experience regarding mathematics? I believe that yeah. for me, mathematics is quite hard. So what do you think? Okay, for me, I think that science platform like uh, physics, bio, 
and chemist is very hard for me so that's why um i took mathematics i i'm taking statistics right now which is one of um part of mathematics department um so i think mathematics is fine <laughs> better uh, because i do like doing experiments lab report and so on that's why i'm taking statistics which is one of um course in mathematics department yeah that's true okay thank you for sharing and i actually want to ask ansha but it doesn't it seems like she's having a technical error internet connection so for me i'm from department of chemistry for me the why i choose chemistry in a degree is because because i think it is interesting because we can use it in our daily life so i believe that there's a lot more thing to explore and i'm not saying that other subjects easy everything is difficult but it's okay we as a student have to try our best to to study and learn and maybe we can contribute to the future because there's a lot more things to do right that's right okay so um, we know that so i i will try to read some of the oh abraham soidi he said bio is fine <laughs> okay bio is fine farahan also uh, said math is fine yes everything is fine everything is fun to learn so guys please make sure to properly study okay because we are in the middle of test too i believe so hope you guys do your best for your test too. Okay, let's see the comment section below. Okay, easy. Yes, max the best. Okay. Science is fine. Yes, science is fine because we can do a lot of things related of science with science. Okay. Science is life, actually. Oh, yeah, from the biology students, science is life. <laughs> okay, Namikaze Minato. Wow. This one, this person must be like watching anime, I believe. So, good luck, team Staycation. Wow, Staycation. So, dear YouTube Live viewers, don't forget. Keep on comment uh, to support your favorite team. So, okay, Faizi Izudin, he said all the best to every contestant and remember to have participating. I'm sure they are having a lot of fun. Okay, Hidayah Binti Abdul Aziz, she said everyone has their own favorite subject and something that they can do more. Where is it? Okay, something that they can do more better compared to other. Yes, that's true. Okay. Santai. Okay, good luck to 20s. So, although, yes, Pavi Tren. Although we are separate by department, but we always united as FASA. Yes, that's true. We have four different departments, but we are one as FASA. That's a nice. That's nice, Pavi. Thank you, Pavi. Okay. Uh, right. So I think that we can start our quiz now so i'm sorry for the technical error so like now let's enjoy our competition now so shall we start our quiz let's go okay for the first question 
The diagram above show a scalene triangle. It is true or false? Hmm, what do you think is the correct answer? So, dear viewers, you can also try to answer the question. It's okay to be wrong because we have our lovely panelists here to explain to you guys about the question. Oh, some of you answer true. So is it true? But maybe false. We don't know. Okay, time's up. Okay, let's see the leaderboard. Oh, the first group. <gasps> okay, it seems like some, most of you answered the wrong answer. But don't worry, if you don't understand, we can have Sarah to explain about the question. Sarah, can you please explain? Yes, sure, Shamini. Thank you very much. So for this question, we all do that uh, triangle has many types of um, of triangle, right? We have scalar triangle, isolated triangle, right angle triangle, and many more. So for this question, you need to know what is the definition for a scalar triangle. Scalar triangle is has all its side with the different length. So as we can see in this diagram, that ten centimeter is not equal with five centimeter and not equal to its height as well, which is four centimeter. That's mean it is true for this equation. It is a scaling triangle. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for the great explanation. So let's go to the next question. The rarest blood group is, is it O negative, A negative, A positive, or AB negative? What do you think? Some of the some of the viewers answer a negative. Hmm. Is it true? So let's see after this. Okay, time's up. Oh, quadrifoglio, the first place. Okay, let's have uh, Najiha from the Department of Biology to explain about this question. Okay, of course, why not? So this question is questioning about the rarest blood group. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, uh, do you all know how many are the main blood type that are present? So don't forget to comment down below. And regarding to this question, so I still remember um, that my teacher told me that O is like the universal group. Most of the people on earth has O blood type. So definitely it's not the answer. So uh, this also is general um, knowledge. And AB is actually rare. But to be exact, AB negative is the rarest one. And in fact, there are about only 1% of donors with AB negative. So if you are with AB negative, then you are the rarest gem. Oh, wow. I thought that O is a gem because I'm the type of O blood. So, but it's okay. <laughs> so let's go to the next question. Okay, what, which is the following? Is the organic hydrocarbon compound? Is it methane, diamond, salt or carbon dioxide a 
our dear viewers, you can try to answer this question. What, which one do you think is the correct answer? So, Arshad said methane. Hmm, is it true? Let's see. So, many of you say methane is the correct answer. Okay, time's up. So, let's see who's dominate the chart now. Okay, number one, still quadrifoglio. Well, most of you answered it correctly. So, can we have Aisha to explain, to explain about the question? Yes, uh, Mimi can. Okay, first of all, I want to say congratulations to all groups that answered this question correctly. So, first of all, I want to explain about what organic hydrocompound is. Hydrocompound is an organic compound which consists only hydrogen and carbon. So, the answer is methane. Why is it? Because chemical formula for methane is CH4 and not a diamond, not a salt or carbon dioxide. For example, salt. Salt is not the answer. Why? Because salt, the chemical formula for salt is NaCl and it consists uh, no hydrogen or no carbon. So the answer for this question is meeting. Okay, thank you, Aisha. So I hope everyone understand about the question. So let's go to the next question. Switch in figure one is switch from A to B. Which curve will you get in figure two? Is it the answer is line B or line C or line D? Which one is the correct answer? Some of you answer B. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, time's up. Okay, add group so dominate the group, the chart. So let's have Shaza to explain about this question. Okay, thank you, Shamimi. Um, congratulations for those who answer it correctly because I think it is a tricky question even for me. So uh, the answer is uh, line B. Why? Because uh, when the switch is switched from A to B, then the small the small R will be uh, an open circuit. Uh, there is no current will go through it. So um, the answer is B over R. And it will decreasing exponentially. Okay, that's all for this question. Thank you, Shaza, for the explanation. So let's go to the next question. The rate at which a radioactive element decay is called as quarter life, whole life, or half life. Which one is the correct answer? Nuru Atira Jusso said half life. Oh, most of the answer is half life. So, but is it true? We will see. Okay, time's up. Wow, everyone answered it correctly. So let's have Aisha from the Department of Chemistry to explain about this question. 
Mr. Sharmini. Joke, guys. You got this question correctly. So, first of all, uh, most of you must be wondering why DK mean because it's uh, it was uh, the words is not uh, words that we usually hear. So, I will about what is this, which is the process by which an unstable atom uses energy by so the half life is the rate at which a relative element decay because. Uh, the half-life is the time required for a quantity of substance to reduce to half for, from its initial value. So it also describes about how long the stable atom to survive. And for this question, the correct answer is half-life. Okay, thank you, Ansha, for brilliant explanation. Then, uh, shall we go to the next question? <laughs> Out of the day is the process of releasing hydrolytic enzyme to destroy worn out organelles or digestion of ingested food that has been taken into cell or digesting the entire cell or destroy pathogen cell. Hmm. Which one is the correct answer? Okay, time's up. Wow, Gladiator Impact dominate the first place. Okay, let's hear, let's have Najiha from Department of Biology to explain about this question. Okay, so does anyone find this question is a bit hard because I'm thinking the same too, because if you are not, uh, doesn't have any biology background, so this question is going to be a bit harder. But regarding this question, the participant are going to cope with either digestion or destroying. So the participant need to think back about the main function, the function of autophagy itself. So the function of autophagy itself is to destroy one out organelle. And its process is very important because it maintains the homeostasis in our body. So that's explaining what is the answer for this question. Okay, thank you, Najiha. So let's go to the next question. <laughs> Diagram shows a N A and B logic gate. If input A is one and input B is zero, what will the input C be? Is it zero one, ten, or zero, or one? Which one is the correct answer? Some of the viewers answer one. Hmm. Okay, time's up. Like, see the leader boy. Okay, so let's have uh, Shaza from the Department of Physics to explain about this question. Okay, um, from the statistic, um. Uh, based on the answer, uh, based on the participant answer, um, maybe it's a tricky question for some of you. Um, actually, this is a NAND logic gate, which is not N logic gate. So, not N logic gate. Uh, we need to do the N first, N logic gate first. Then we need to not the not the um input. So for the A, it is input one and B input zero so when it is n um it will be 
one zero equal to zero and uh, then when it will be uh, then uh, when we not eight um it will be inverse uh, and the answer is one zero inverse one okay that's all Thank you, Shaza, for the explanation. So let's go to the next question. I look for a used car for six thousand ringgit and paid fifty percent deposit. How much did he still have to pay? Is it nine hundred? Of four thousand five hundred, or five thousand one hundred, or maybe six thousand. Dear YouTube viewers, you can try to answer the question as well. Okay, time's up. Oh wow, Gladiator Impact still number one. So let's have Sarah to explain about this question. All right, thank you so much, Shamili. So for this question, Ali bought a used car for 6,000 ringgit and paid 15% first, then how many more did he need to pay? So for this question, 15% have been paid by Ali. Then we need to 100% minus 15% become 85%. Then 85% times by the price of the car, which is 6,000 ringgit. Therefore, the answer will be, uh, be 5,100 ringgit. That is my explanation. Thank you. Get back to you, Shamimi. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, so let's go to the next question. The metal present in the hemoglobin is, is it cadmium? or calcium, or phosphorus, or iron. Some of the viewers answer iron. Hmm. Oh wow, Gladiator oh, wow. Impact is still number one. So let's have well, let's Najiha have to explain about the question. Okay, but can I ask Sarah first? Sarah, can I ask you? Yes, sure, Jia. Okay, do you familiar with team iron complexes? Um, sorry, I don't know why it is. But it's okay. Um, hello. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, Did I missed it. Okay, sorry, sorry, it's okay. You can continue to ask me the question. Okay, I'm sorry, everyone. So, um, the heme iron complexes is one that is consists of the hemoglobin. So, hemoglobin is consists of heme iron complexes, and each chain holds up a heme group which containing iron atoms. And this heme iron com heme iron complexes giving the hemoglobin to red color, and that's why our blood is or red in color and in fact the higher the amount of iron that you have in the blood 
the healthier you are. So back to the host, and I'm very sorry for the technical error. It's okay, Najiha. You explained really well. So let's go to the next question. Okay, ice skating is possible and practical because of a unique property of water. Is it because steel and ice have less kinetic friction? Or melting point decreases with increasing pressure? Or ice readily sublimes? Or ice is a good thermal insulator? Which one is the correct answer? Oh, prodigies at the first place. Wow. Okay, let's have Shaza from the Department of Physics to explain about this question. Okay, Sharimi. Um, so, um, as we learned before, when the skate, when the skate, uh, when the skate glides on the ice, there will be a friction, right? Um, then, uh, uh, then basically it will produce some heat. Um, so logically, the ice will melt, right? But um water has a unique property which is when um uh, the melting point will decrease if the pressure is increased um so the water will not melt when the blade of the skate glides on the ice due to the high pressure um the ice will melt at temperature below 273 degree of kelvin and or zero degrees of celsius so um that's why uh, when we skate the ice will not melt because when the pressure is increased the melting point will decrease it's a fun fact actually oh wow that's definitely interesting fact so thank you shaza for the explanation let's go to the next question <laughs> Given that sine alpha is equal to 1 over 5 and cos alpha is equal to 1 over 4, then what is sine 2 alpha? Is it 1 over 20 or 1 over 2 over 5 or 2 over 7? It seems like Aina Anissa answered 1 over 10. There's also Nur Ali Anissa. Is it true 1 over 10 is answer? Okay, that's up. Wow, Prodigy is still at the top. Okay, let's have Sarah from Department of Mathematics to ask this question. All right, sure. So for this question, I would like to say good job to those that uh, have answered it correctly, which is the answer is one out of one over 10. Um, this is based on the basic formula that you need to understand in mathematics so for this question i would like to ask aisha first what do you think uh this formula name you have any idea about it uh 
<laughs> or anyone else? I forgot already. Uh, it's okay. Maybe it's I'm three saying. goals? Yes, correct. Thank you, Shamimi, for the answer. So this is the trigonometric identities. Okay. So for this question, um, we have. I think that is it a trigonometric identities. I think it's that correct. it is a trigonometric identities. Is it correct? Yes, correct, Aisha. It's trigonometric. Can identities. you hear me? So. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I can hear you, Aisha. Okay, for this question, it is a, based on the formula in trigonometry identities. <laughs> so we have sine alpha here and cos alpha here. So for this question, it says what is sine 2 alpha? So the formula is when we have sine 2 alpha, it will become 2 times by sine alpha times by cos time alpha. So that means 2 times by 1 over 5 and times by 1 over 4, which the answer will be 1 over 10. So that's the answer. Thank you. Thank you for the explanation. So let's go to the next question. One element in electrons, it will be positively charged or negatively charged or neutral. Which one is the correct answer? Okay, time's up. Like see the leaderboard. So it seems like Prodigy is still number one. That's great. Okay, let's have uh, one of the one of our panel, Ansha, to explain about the question. So this question asks you when one element gain electron. But before that, element, uh, other than gain electron, it also can lose electron or maybe it, uh, it will not gain or lose any of electron. But for this question, when element is gain electron, it will be negative light negatively charged which it mean that it uh, have more electron and it's not a positively charged because if the element is positively charged it means that it has uh, it lost electron and for the neutral of course it's not a correct answer for this question because if the element is neutral it means that it's not undergo any gaining of electron or losing of electron and so for this question the correct answer is negatively charged Thank you, Ansha, for the explanation. So let's go to the next question. So for this question, we have a grey diagram of the concave lens. So the image formed by this diagram is is it real, inverted, smaller, or is it virtual, upright, or bigger and bigger, or it is infinite, or D, virtual, upright, and smaller? Which is the answer? So time's up. Wow, Prodigy still at the top. 
So let's have Shaza to explain about this question. Okay, thank you, Shamimi. Um, well, first, uh, let me ask Najiha. Najiha, um, do you yeah, realize, realize, realize there is a, an answer in the, the diagram? Oh, really? Yeah. Actually, the blue arrow, a blue arrow, is the answer because um, uh, when we meet, when we when we answer the uh, about the optic question, we always need to uh, sketch the light diagram. So, uh, based on the blue arrow, um, it is in front of the lens. So, it means it will be a virtual image. Then, it will be upright because it has the same direction with the object. Uh, and then, it will be smaller than the object. So, the answer is virtual, upright, and smaller. So, actually, the answer is in the question. Okay, that's all. Thank you, Shaza. Wow, even, even me, myself, don't realize that the answer is already there. So, I hope everyone can uh, give extra attention when you reading the question, okay? So, let's go to the next question. <laughs> of the statement on physical changes are correct. First, a, a physical change can be reversed. Two, a physical change is a change in state. Three, a physical change is a change in form. Fourth, a physical change is where new substances are formed. Is it one and two? Or two or three? Two and three? Three and four? Or maybe the last one, one and four. Okay, time's up. Let's see the leaderboard. Okay, Prodigy still at the Wow, congratulations. So let's have Aisha to explain about this question. Okay, thank you, Shamimi. So for this question, it asks you to choose only two of the correct statement for physical about physical changes. And the correct answer is two and three. Why? Uh, okay. Why is it? Because a physical change is a change in a state. For example, uh, when a substance is changed from a solid state to a liquid state, and the and the next is the third answer, which is a physical change is a change in form. For example, as you guys know, the ice is in cube shape. So when it undergo the physical change, it changed to the liquid state. So it does hot. It is not in the same form anymore. So the class is to entry for the physical changes. Okay, thank you Ansha for the explanation. Shall, shall we move to the next question? Y is equal to 3 sine 3x. Find the y double front. Is it 9 sine 3x? Or 9 cos 3x? Or maybe negative 27 cos 3x? Or negative 27 sine 3x? Which one is the correct answer? Thank you. 
Okay, that's it. So let's check the leaderboard score. Oh wow, new group coming. Capella, the first one. So let's have Sarah to explain this question. All right, thank you. Uh, so for this question, uh, congrats again to those who have answered it correctly. So I would like to ask Shaza for this question. May I? Um, yes. Okay. So do you know what is the meaning of the mathematical term of why double prime is? Um, yes, because uh, I take uh, mathematics subjects also. So uh, it is um, a second derivative, right? Yeah, correct. So for this question, you need to differentiate it twice. So for the first differentiation, for y prime, it will become um, 9 cos 3x. Then we need to differentiate once again, which it will become y double prime equal to negative 27 sine 3x. It is because the when we differentiate cos, we will get negative sine. So for the question, this question, the answer is negative 27 sine 3x. That's all. Get back to you, Shamili. Okay, thank you, Sarah, for the explanation. So let's move to the next question. Mm -hmm. The organelle that contains digestive enzyme is neutrolis, lysosome, cytoplasm, or chloroplast. Which one is the correct answer? Um, you, you two live viewers, you can try to answer the question. So Aina Anissa, she said lysosome. Is it true? Hmm. We'll see. Okay, time's up. Let's see the board score. Okay, Capella still number one. Congratulations. I believe that this question is from biology. So let's have Najiha to explain the question. Okay, thank you, host. So this question says that an organelle that have digestive enzymes. So if you see the first answer, nucleus, nucleus doesn't have any digestive enzyme and it also the gang of the nucleus. And if you see the lysosome, lysosome is the organelle that contains digestive enzyme that is named as lysozyme. Whereas the other answers such as chloroplast, it is functioning in photosynthesis with uh, converting light energy into food that is good for plants. So back to the host. Thank you. Thank you, Najiha, for your brilliant explanation. Now I know the answer. So let's go to the next question. <laughs> If the total resistance of resistors in series is a summation and the total inverse resistance of resistors in parallel is the summation of the inverse resistance, calculate the total resistance in this circuit. Is the answer is 0.6 ohm or 1.5 ohm or 1.0 ohm or maybe 3.0 ohm? Let's check the leaderboard. No. Phil Capella. Wow. Congratulations. And let's have Shaza to explain this question. Okay, um, it is another electronic question. So, um, 
it is a long question with a long stimuli which is uh, which is if the total resistance of resistors in series is a summation and the total inverse resistance of resistors in parallel is the summation of inverse resistance so as we can see in the diagram it is a series um, it is a series circuit so the resistance is the summation so we just need to sum up the both of the resistor resistor so one plus two equal to three so it's a simple question okay uh, thank you shaza for the explanation let's move on to the next question <laughs> Which one is the impact predator? Is it eagle or snake? Dear YouTube Live viewers, you can also try to answer this question. Most of the viewers answered eagle. Mm, let's see if the if the answer is correct. So uh, now it's time's up. Oh, Kapila is still number one. Congratulations. So let's have uh, Najiha to explain this question. Okay, this question looks like simple but it's not because there's a word APAC here. APAC is like a word that's not familiar with all of us, right? So um, let me explain the word of APAC and also predator. So the predator is the carnivore that kills and eats other animals, whereas the APAC is like um, the highest place in the hierarchy. So combining the both words, it becomes an APAC predator that sits at every top at very top of the food chain and at the center of the food web so if you can see the picture eagle here versus the snake of course the eagle will win and the snake will never be the eagle and that's all back to host thank you najiha for the explanation yes that's true i don't know what is apex mean because i only know about the predator but thank you for the explanation so let's move on to the next question what is the coefficient of AB square in A plus B cube? Is it 2 or 3 or 4 or even 12? Which one is the correct answer? Okay, time's up. Okay, Kapila is still number one. Congratulations. So I believe this is mathematics question. So let's have Sarah to explain this question. All right, here we go. So for this question, I am impressed with all the finalists tonight because they can expand very well with this question within the time limit. Okay, so for this question, you need to do uh, the expansion, which is A plus B times by A plus B times by A plus B. So the answer will be A cubed plus 
3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. So the question is about what is the coefficient of a b squared? So what is the um, whole number for the a b squared? So from the answer that I've given to you guys before, the answer will be 3. So you guys uh, did well for this expansion. And you guys also can try this, um, this tips, uh, which is using Pascal's triangle. I bet you guys have learned this before during your matriculation or foundation. Uh, so that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for the explanation. So let's go to the next question. What makes something radioactive? Is it element with an atomic number above 81? Or unstable nucleus? Or continuous? Or it decays over time? Hmm. Which one is the correct answer? Okay, time's up. So let's check the leaderboard. Oh wow, congratulations, Capella, you still number one. So let's have Ansha to explain this question. Hello, Aisha. Are you there? Aisha? Are you still there? Okay, Najiha, while waiting for uh okay, while waiting for Ansha, Najiha, why do you think that the answer is an unstable nucleus? Mm, losing electron. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about it, Shaza? Um I study uh, about radioactive in radioactive. So before that, we need to know what radioactive means because radioactive is made up of atom who <laughs> yeah. Oh no, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, uh, Shaza, can you try to explain the question? Okay, um, radioactive is a uh unstable nucleus because um uh, when when yeah this is an unstable nucleus lah. uh when the uh what makes it uh the the characteristic uh is why we use this for a nuclear reaction because of the unstable nucleus it will be very sensitive and will uh, radiate. Um, can I Okay, explain? thank you, Shaza. Oh yeah, Sarah, please. Okay, so for this question, I would like to explain it. Um, so before this, uh, we already familiar with the term of radioactive, right? Before this, mm, before the previous question. So, an atom is yes. unstable if these forces are unbalanced. So, if the nucleus has an excess of internal energy, instability of an atom's nucleus. 
is may be the result from an excess of either neutrons or protons. So that's my explanation. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for the explanation. Thank you as well, Shaza, for trying to explain the question. You did a good job. So that's the end of 20 questions in total. So why we wait for our key to calculate the final score to determine the top three for FASA Coliseum, we will move on to the Q&A session. Let's take a look at some of the comments from our live viewers. So, all right. So for this round, Kapila uh, has the first place. The first is Capella, the second one is Gladiator Impact, and the third one is Vacation. Congratulations to all participants, you all did a good job. Okay, why waiting for the final result? Let's read some of the questions, viewers. So, and dear viewers, you can try to ask any questions that because we have our brilliant panel here, they can try your, their best to answer your question. So don't be shy to drop some questions. Okay, from the first question is from Ayuni Amin. What animal is true apex predator in the ocean? So can uh, one of the panelists try to answer the question? Yeah, uh, let me try to answer this question. Okay, based on my knowledge, um, in the ocean, there's, um, there's an animal known as killer whales. So these killer whales are one of the examples of the apex predator, which means um, they have no natural predator. So uh, as we, as I have told before, that apex predator is like sitting on the top for every food chain. So in this case, um, kilo waves are sitting on the top of the food chain. So I hope this can answer your question. I mean, I mean so back to the host. Wow, thank you so much for the explanation. So from the second question is from Noor Izwan Hakimi. So zooplankton feed on bacterial plankton. Does this mean that zooplankton is a apex predator also? So can can one of the panel try to answer this question? Uh, I'll try again, <laughs> again and again. So, <laughs> uh, I think, um, uh, in my opinion, I think no because. There, there are other animals that can feed on zooplankton as well. And the predators um, are actually can be fishes and also the whale. So I'm sorry, the zooplankton is not the apex predator in this food chain. Okay, thank you. I hope no is one, Hakimi. Uh, I hope you can uh, understand the answer. So, do we have any more questions? Okay, there's also some of you comment, Kapila come back. Yes, Kapila has come back because they win the first place for this round. So, we, but we're still not sure which one is the winner for final round, so stay tuned for that. Okay, from Farish Shuko. So, kada nak tahu, apakah nama base nitrogen from DNA? Can we have one of you to explain this question? Uh, okay, let me try again. So it seems like I'm monopoly, I'm monopoly the discretion and A answer. 
So uh, I think the viewers are actually interested in biology. So let me try to answer this. Uh, so this um, DNA is uh, actually a chemical name for the molecules that carry genetic instruction. So the DNA um, is actually the original word is deoxyribonucleic acid. So the D is stand for deoxy, uh, ribo, and N is for the nucleic, and A is for the acid. So the DNA is DNA molecule is actually consists of two strands that wind around another to form a shape known as a double helix. So if you are the biologist, you probably are familiar lah, with double helix structure. DNA. Yeah, okay. I hope very Shuko can uh, you are able to accept the answer. Thank you. Thank you for the explanation. It seems like most of our viewer is interested in biology. So where is the student from chemistry, maths and physics? You can try, you can ask questions because we have our panel here to answer your question. Okay, from Kuratu Ain, just wonder, biology and physics are the topic yang related to chemistry ke? Hmm. So Sarah, uh, Sarah, oh sorry. So Shaza, do you have any, um, can you try to answer this question? Um, actually, yes, there is um, some chapter that we learn uh, a bit about chemistry, like about uh, nuclear, uh, about what else? Um, but uh, I'm second year and for now, uh, I'm more to mathematics rather than chemistry. So um, maybe I will learn more about chemistry in the future. Yeah, I hope Kuratu, uh, you can uh, accept the answer. So from Sarah Nabil Hamdan, someone asked before, how many logic gates are there in total? So I believe this question is for Shaza. Okay, there is another physics question that is about logic gates. Logic gates is an interesting topic in physics. Uh, I guess many of us love logic gates, but I don't like <laughs> logic gates. Um, uh, actually, <laughs> there is seven basic logic gates, which is N, or um, XOR, um, not gate, um, not n, not or, and x not or. So, um, basically, these logic gates um we learn in physics, and uh, my friends also also told me that they learn it in com uh, science computer, uh, because we use logic gates in programming also. Okay, that's all. Mm. That's interesting. Okay, so let's go to the next question. So from Ahmed Kabe, I somewhere that there is a new blood type found in India. If I'm not mistaken, what is it? Hmm, new blood type. Hmm. So let's have our biology student to answer the question. Okay, so first of all, let me uh, correct the answer about the basic DNA, I actually um, read the question wrongly, so forgive me, the uh, dear YouTube viewers. So actually, um, the um, basis, four bases for DNA, which is uh, adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. So I'm very sorry for read the question wrongly. So let me uh, answer the question by Ahmad Kabir, which is um, the new blood type found in India. From my knowledge, um, from my knowledge um, the blood type, the total blood type is actually growing numbers uh, and there are many blood type that is found um, by the researchers and this is the rare one which is the Bombay blood group that was um, first discovered in Mumbai and um, each blood, red blood cell has antigen of, uh, over its surface which helps to determine which group it belongs to and this Bombay blood group is also called as H -H, uh, which is um, the deficient, deficient, deficient in expressing antigen H, uh, meaning that our uh, red blood cell has no antigen H. For instance, uh, in the AB blood group, which is related to the question before in the quizzes, 
and uh, for instance in the AB blood group, both antigen A and B are found. And we, and A, blood group A will have A antigen, whereas B will have B antigen. In whereas in HH, uh, the Bombay blood, um, there are no A or B antigen. And for the YouTube viewers, it is important to know our blood type because um it is important to know it because when we have like um blood donor to want to donate the blood for us if we are receiving the wrong type that doesn't match our blood type it's going to be high risk such as can causing into death i hope this answered the question thank you so much for the brilliant action that's definitely uh an interesting fact because I only know there's only four that type, which is A, B, A, B, and O. So this is definitely a new information for me. Thank you so much for the explanation. So let's go to the next question. So from Aisha Perkins, can you share some characteristic of gamma radiation? Just wondering. So can we have one of the panelists to answer the question? I believe this is for physics. Can Shaza, can you please answer the question? Okay, thank you. It's another physics question. <laughs> Um, so, um, uh, gamma, gamma radiation is a uh, small radiation. Um, uh, can you give me some time uh, to, to think about this question? Okay, okay. Okay, Shaza, so let's go uh, move on to the next question from Nur Ain Azha. When is sine cos tan applied in real life? So I believe this question is for Sarah from the Department of Mathematics. Can you try to answer the question? Yes, sure. Wow, finally, mathematics question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but however, this is some sort of tricky question. But based on my research, when is sine cosine tangent applied in real life. We all know that sine, cosine, and tangent is some, is trigonometry. So trigonometry may not have its application in solving practical issue, may not have direct applications in solving practical issues. However, it is used in various things that we enjoy so much, such as music. For example, music as you know, sound waves, travel and this patent though not as regu regular as a sine or cosine function, but it's still used to develop computer music. You know, the graph or sine and cosine like this, right? So the travel wave also like this. So it is not directly the application, but however, the pattern is still uh, same, okay? Um, a computer cannot obviously listen to an and comprehend music as we do. So computers represent mathematically by its constituent sound waves. So we not using it, but computer using it. Okay, you guys got it? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah, for the explanation. So let's go to the previous question about the characteristic of gamma radiation. So Shaza, can you answer the question? Um, okay, um, um, gamma radiation is actually um, able to travel many meters in air and many centimeters in human tissue. Uh, and it can penetrate most materials. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, gamma rays also can kill bacteria. Uh, as I have go to the nuclear, uh, nuclear agency in Bangi, uh, during my secondary school, uh, they explained that they use this uh, gamma rays to to kill the uh, to sanitize to sanitize the products that um, they produce. Some of it like 
um, skincare and so on, they will uh, go through the gamma rays and then it will sanitize and they can um, uh, they can bertahan lagi lama lah. So the expiry date will be longer. Uh, so uh, it is one of the function of gamma uh, rays. Okay, thank you Shaza for the question. So, la, so that's all the question that we can answer for this Q&A session. So with that, and the, the final thing is here. So now we know the result of the final round. Don't you guys excited about it? Don't you guys want to know who is the winner? Who is the one that will win our grand prize? So now we will share the now we will announce the winner of PASA Coliseum 2020 and 2021. So why waiting for that? Uh, do you think live viewers, who do you think will win this Pasa Coliseum 2020 and 2020? Is your favorite team win? Win? I believe that there is also fans for the staycation team. So which team is going to be the winner? I hope everyone enjoying this Pasta Colosseum because everyone has done their best. So, yeah. I hope so too. So, some of the viewers comment that Curry Pop probably be the winner. So, the theme sounds delicious, actually. Okay, the final result is already here so congratulations for these three group quad uh, the first place is win by the quadri for glio congratulations the second place is no secret congratulations as well and the third place is staycation so congratulations to all the winners for your thank you as well to the viewers so for kids supporting us so with that we have reached the end of final session of Pasa Coliseum. Thank you to all panelists for joining me. So let's give the participant a big round of applause for completing the quiz. And my dearly appreciated viewers, thank you so much for supporting us from the first round to the final round. It truly means a lot to us. So the questions that are not answered in the comment section during our Q&A will be shared on our Instagram, FASA underscore UPM, or our Facebook page, FASA UPM. And please make sure to follow our YouTube channel, FASA Studio, and give it a like and subscribe for the channel. So um, I'm Nur Shamimi. As the host for tonight, would like to apologize if I have done any mistake throughout the event. Thank you to all the lecturers, committees, and participants, and also dear YouTube Live viewers for contributing and for joining the final session of FASA Coliseum. Thank you so much for your time. So, dear participants, please check our Discord group for the Google Form link to mark your attendance and don't worry for our youtube viewers please check the comment section for the google link or you can scan the qr code that will be presented on the screen after this so that's all from me thank you till we meet again in fasa coliseum 2.0 next year bye thank you